Hey everyone, Robert from Gunfather Milsim, and today we're going to talk about room clearing methods. In particular, talk about why I endorse the limited penetration or threshold assault method over traditional stack and clear methods. Now, for those of you who are new here or not familiar with the channel, uh, my background, I've been a police officer for almost 20 years. I've been a SWAT officer for over 12 years. I'm a CQB and firearms instructor. This is not to say that I'm the king shit of tactical fuck mountain and I'm the end all be all on tactics. That is not true. What I am saying is that I have a lot of real world experience in this area and when I'm giving you my opinion, it's not based on airsoft or video games. It's actually based on a lot of experience and a lot of training over a fairly long career in the field. So, additionally, I've been playing a fairly avid player of airsoft and or milsim since about 2008. So I like to look, take the real world skills I use professionally and use them in airsoft and milsim. And there is a lot of crossover and then there's a lot of stuff that doesn't cross over. But in my opinion, the limited penetration room clearing method is the best for both real world and for airsoft. And here's the five reasons why. The first one is it's behaviorally compliant. Human beings naturally avoid danger and pain, and they definitely avoid being killed. And I don't care how well trained you are, when there's bullets coming through a doorway, behaviorally, you're going to be hard pressed to convince yourself to go through it. Your, your instinct is it's going to be not to go through that door because you don't want to die. The same is true in airsoft when there's BBs coming out of the door. Even though you know you're not going to die, you still want to avoid the pain and the sting of getting hit by them, and you also want to avoid that walk to respawn. And that's why people naturally do some sort of threshold assault whether they're trained in it or not they're going to stop at that threshold at the doorway and they're going to try to fight from that doorway everything that's inside the room it's behavioral it's natural and where traditional stack and flow methods go against your human nature to avoid danger the limited penetration method actually encourages it and works with it and that's why it works so well the second reason is when using limited penetration method the attacker dictates the amount of exposure to the defenders inside the room and basically what it means is you're doing a segmented search of the room instead of running in the room and having to take the whole room in in one big, in one big moment when you got to just process the entire room. Um, the reason this is so effective is the same reason that you want to look around cover instead of looking over cover. When you look over cover, you expose yourself to everybody on that plane. And even though you can only engage one target at a time, they can all engage you at the same time. Thus, you look around cover and then you can control the amount of angles of attack you have and your amount of exposure at the same time. We're going to use the same concept when we're clearing rooms using the limited penetration method. We're going to do a segmented search from the threshold and only engage targets at a speed that we can process that little sliver, then that little sliver, then that little sliver. Now I've done a couple videos on OODA loops and I'm not going to get too far into the weeds on it here. Just understand that when you clear a room using this segmented search, the main advantage it gives you is in reference to OODA loops, okay, in that I am only processing the room, one section of the room at a time, at an amount that I can process effectively, okay, as opposed to running in the room and having to observe the entire room and process the entire room in an instant. Understand that doing it in a segmented fashion gives you a huge advantage over a prepared defender inside the room. And an Airsoft and Milsim, that's all we have is prepared defenders for the most part. They're always ready and waiting for us. Thus, we want to use every advantage we can get. Now, I created a quick simulation using the Door Kickers game to demonstrate this point. Basically, I just made a center-fed room with five defenders in it, and they're all prepared defenders. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to assault that room with a team of attackers, and they're going to use the traditional stack and flow method, and they're going to run into the room. And as you can see, although they have plenty of guys coming in, because they all got to go through that doorway one at a time, essentially, it's easy pickings for the defenders to pick them all off. Now I'm going to take the same scenario and I'm going to use only one attacker using a limited penetration method clearing from the threshold. And as you can see, he can easily engage one target at a time and successfully clear that room without any casualties. Yes, I realize Door Kickers is not a perfect simulator for the real world. No video game is. I'm just using it to illustrate my point. The third reason I prefer the limited penetration method is that it allows the attacker to retreat. It gives them an avenue of escape if they are injured. When you run into a room, you are committed to the room. If you get hit, injured, killed, whatever, in that room, you are down in that room. And the other people on your team are going to have to keep throwing bodies in that room 
until they, they're victorious and they rescue you. And this can be a very costly endeavor. As opposed to the limited penetration method, if you get hit at a threshold, you can either A, self-extract, or B, be extracted by a member of your team. And now you, don't, you no longer have to run in that room. Now you can step back and think of a different way of attacking that room, whether it be calling the person out, whether it be using gas, dogs, uh, blow a hole in the wall, whatever, any number of methods, it gives you options. As opposed to running in the room, then you've bought it. The fourth reason I prefer this method is because it is manpower efficient. Stack and flow methods are very manpower intensive. You gotta bring a lot of bodies in that room because honestly, you don't know what's in there, you don't know how many guys are in there, and you gotta bring enough people with you to totally dominate that structure, hopefully. Uh, the limited penetration method, one guy is doing most of the work. Can you bring a second with you to support you? Absolutely. But generally speaking, one guy is gonna can do a lot of work. It takes a little more time, not a lot more time, and it's a hell of a lot safer. I made another simulation using door kickers again. Here we have a multiple room structure. The first time we're gonna assault it, we're gonna use the traditional stack and flow method again. There's lots of prepared defenders in here. We're gonna use stack and flow with a big team. And as you can see, once they make entry, initially they do very well. But as they go room by room by room, engaging more and more prepared defenders, the more casualties they take, the less effective they become until finally they're overwhelmed. Contrast this with a solo operator using the limited penetration method. And you can see here, he's able to successfully engage every one of these prepared defenders one by one and successfully clear the structure. Now, obviously it is slower, but it's more effective and it's safer. And ultimately he survives and he successfully clears the structure where the team using the stack and flow method was unable to. Fifth reason I prefer the limited penetration method is that it maximizes the attacker's use of cover or concealment. Um, obviously, when you're attacking from a threshold, that threshold offers the attacker either A, cover, or B, concealment, or C, both. Um, now, just to bring it up, this is the main source of criticism I get from people involving this method. They're, oh, you're going to get shot through the wall. You know, that's just stupid airsoft crap because you're going to get shot through the wall, you're going to die every time. There's multiple reasons why I don't like the criticism of, hey, they're gonna shoot you through the wall, and that's why that method doesn't work. One is it assumes the person is armed with something that can shoot through the wall. Two, it assumes that the wall is weak enough that it's gonna, the bullet's gonna pass right through it. Yes, that can happen. That's the worst case scenario. It may or may not happen. But this argument assumes that when you run in the room that none of that bad stuff's gonna happen because you've surprised the person or something. If a prepared defender who's willing to shoot you through a wall is also willing to shoot you when you run in the room. The advantage of when they shoot you through the wall, if it goes through the wall, is even in a residential structure where all you have is, is drywall and two by fours, drywall and two by fours stop bullets a hell of a lot better than air particles. And when you run in the room, all you have is air particles protecting you. So I, for my life, prefer using threshold assaults. Even if you do get hit outside the room, as I've already stated, you can retreat. As opposed to being in the room, then you're screwed and you're committed to the room. So I don't think this argument really holds up to, to real world scrutiny. Understand that clearing rooms is dangerous. The only safe way to do it, the safe, 100% safe way, is not even go in. We can't do that. Okay? Our job is to go in, or our sport in the Sega Airsoft, is we gotta go in and capture that objective. So you gotta go in. So. Once we've decided we have to go in, now we're just playing the game of percentages. Which 
method of clearing is going to be the safest most of the time. And playing those percentages, you know, for me and my team, limited penetration every time wins by a very wide margin. The other criticism you often get of limited penetration method is that you're not using any surprise. You're not using any method of surprise and, and surprise is king in room clearing. Um, I, I think that's a little bit ignorant of a response. So before we get too deep into the weeds here, there's two types of surprise. There's, there's global surprise and then there's local surprise. Global surprise is you hit the door, nobody knows you're there and everybody, oh my God, you know, they're here. So that is global surprise. They had no clue you're there. It's the first hit. After that, you have local surprise in each room thereafter, meaning they know somebody's here, but they can't really see them yet, so they're kind of waiting to see when they pop in the door. Once you lose global surprise, you only get global surprise once. Local surprise, you can regain. You regain local surprise by um, using things like flashbangs, okay? You can, you can get that, that surprise back. In the real world, global surprise only lasts for a room or two, okay? You're talking five to eight seconds. How do I know this? Because I have over 600 warrants and all the time in the deeper rooms in a structure, when I get there, people are already surrendering, have their hands up or are looking at the door. Why? Because they know we're there. So that's why I don't put a lot of stock in the, oh, you know, limited penetration is going to ruin my ability to surprise people. They know you're there. Trust me, they know you're there. Now, as far as local surprise is concerned, there is no advantage with running in the room versus peeking in the room using limited penetration, both of which surprise the occupants. You don't have to run into a room to engage someone with a firearm. The bullets move a lot faster than your feet. So as far as local surprise is concerned, neither is better than the other. Finally, I want to mention hybrid method. Now understand that limited penetration room clearing has been around for a very long time. I learned this stuff back in 2008. It's been around a lot longer than that. In professional circles, you know, among SWAT and special operations folks, who discuss room clearing, threshold assaults or limited penetration method is just the, the d debates over it, it is the better way to do things. The only people who are still arguing for stack and flow are people who play video games, uh, learn their CQB method online, don't have any real world experience, or airsoft players. Sorry, fellows. It, it's, that's the only people who are still arguing for the stack and flow is the way to go. They're arguing from a position of ignorance and not real world experience. Having said all that, there is a lot of support for what they call a hybrid method. Hybrid method is basically we're going to use limited penetration threshold assaults for the vast majority, like 99% of our room clearing. But we do acknowledge the fact that in a very small number of situations where there is exigency, there is an advantage to rushing into the room. Um, understand that this method uses techniques like the bounding corner attack method, which I'm not going to get into because it's kind of beyond the scope here, but there are specific techniques that they use when they do rush in the rooms to hopefully distract a defender and make it more effective. Um, it, it's very rare in the hybrid method that you do entry in that method, but it, it is worth noting it does exist. And um, I, I am a proponent of that method, but just understand that the exigent circumstances is going to be a hostage, okay? A hostage-like situation where a third party, their safety is more important than my safety and I'm willing to give up some of my security to rush in there and save their life and give that bad guy something else to shoot at that's not the hostage, namely me. Now, what is that? how does that relate to Airsoft and Milsim? It doesn't. You're not going to have any sort of hostage rescue scenarios, not realistic ones in my experience, in Airsoft or Milsim. And therefore, in that context, just stick with limited penetration and threshold assaults. So that's all I got for the five reasons why I prefer limited penetration method to traditional stack and flow. If you like my video, please hit the bell, like, subscribe, the whole nine. You know how YouTube works. And uh, if you want to have a debate in the comments below, go right ahead. Um, I'll see what I can do and, and we'll chat it up. Thanks for watching.